Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to talk to you about how to make a cinegraph. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramali. I am a French photographer living in the most beautiful romantic city in the world, Paris. And I make one to two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw file of this episode and all the past episodes. We're talking hundreds of raw files, free presets, tutorial, just one click away. Or click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to talk to you about how to make cinegraph. Cinegraph is a really cool effect where you have basically a photo and part of the photo there is some motion in it. And this gets done in Photoshop. So let me show you how we do this. All right, so here I am in Photoshop. I have opened a video that I took of the, uh, you know, the fountains in Las Vegas in the Bellagio Hotel. It's a beautiful show. And uh, so when you open a video in, uh, in Photoshop, just a, a few things, you need to have what we call the timeline open. The best thing to do is to, to go to Windows, sorry, to go to Windows Workspace and go to Motion. By opening Motion, you will have the timeline and the main window is going to redimension itself so that you have some space for the timeline, okay? So let me play and show you the video. I just want to show you something here. If you click on the cogwheel, you have the, I put the resolution of at 50%, this is a full HD video, and um, loop playback so that it loops over and over again. Let me play it for you. So I actually prepared that video with Adobe Premiere. I just imported it into Premiere, did some color correction, and exported it out two seconds. So for this to work, I advise you to work with clips, which is not more like than two seconds, where you have a lot of motions going on and you are on a tripod. That's very important. You've got to be on a tripod so that you don't have any camera movement, but there's got to be motion exactly like this is, right? So, and the reason why two seconds is good is because it, you don't want to have a too big of a file at the end because we're going to do a GIF that you're going to put on Facebook, on your website, anywhere. And uh, for that, you need it to be light so that people page light up, load up, sorry, very fast. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Now, the first thing we need to do to be able to loop this video is we need to, uh, um, I need to blend the end with the beginning. So for that, what I mean by that is when it comes to the end, you see, uh, I want it, you see how it, how it comes to the end and the show is completely over and then it starts again. I want to, I want to loop it so that it doesn't look, I mean, it, on this video, it actually works pretty well, but I want to blend more the end with the beginning and to make a, a nice loop. And that's the principle of an animated GIF. So for that, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and bring this a bit forward, just a little bit, so that we have a few seconds to blend in the end and the beginning. That's very important to that when you're going to, drag the in point it's going to resize the video and now what it did is that it resized the video but now i have a bit of data here that's uh, hidden uh, there and you will understand in one second okay so th that's th that's the clip here on on my layers the clip is called video group one what i'm going to do is press command j and it's going to duplicate that group so now we have two times the same video if i play nothing changes we still have the same principle now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first video and I'm going to drag it till the end. So now the end of this video right after is the beginning of the video, right? Because I just dragged this. But now, remember, I cut in, I put an in point inside. So now I have some space. I can drag this back. Let me see if I can drag it more. Okay. So now we have the end and the beginning mixed up, okay? Uh, so, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag back the end here and I'm going to loop this. So now the end becomes the beginning. So already it gives a, a better loop effect. And to make this even better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the beginning here on this little clip and I'm going to open the, the video group and I'm going to go to opacity, which is here and click here on, on, the, on the little clock and that's going to create that's going to create a keyframe. The keyframe says that here, the opacity is at 100%. Now, what I want is the opposite. I want here the opacity to be at 0%. So that little part of a clip is going to be at 0%. But here, when it comes to the end, I want it to be at 
So now there is two keyframes. One, and, and look at the opacity here. You can look here in the opacity. Here it's at 0%, and as I move to the right, the opacity is going to increase, and the end is going to basically uh, blend with the beginning, and it's going to make a better loop effect. On this video, because it's waterfall, it kind of doesn't really matter, but on other videos, it's going to make a big difference. So let me show you the clip now with this. You see, it kind of loops a little bit better forever. Okay, so now we have done that, and we are ready to do uh, the cinemagraph effect, which is make one part still visible. So what I want to do is, is I want to go to a point on the video where the fountain is very high, like the highest, something like this probably. And I want to freeze everything except what's in front of the Eiffel Towel and uh, behind the Eiffel Towel. So for this, I'm going to clip, uh, click on this first layer and I'm going to press an incredible shortcut, which is Command, Alt, Shift, E. What Command Alt Shift E does is that it creates a picture. It takes that picture and uh, and puts it here on top. But you see, it's in the same video group than video group one. So, but I want the photo to be above. So what I have to do is here in the layer, I have to drag it above here. Boom. And now I can drag and drop this over and make it the size of my video. And if I play now, you just have one still. Like nothing moves anymore because it's just that one photo. So what we want to do now is we're going to play with a mask to uh, get every, you know, get just a part of the photo moving. So I'm going to click create here a white mask and I'm going to take a brush, uh, make sure the uh, harness is at zero percent. Okay, uh, and black is a foreground color, opacity 100 percent, and I'm just going to brush here around the Eiffel Tower. Let's see how that is. Just this part here. Okay, now I'm going to play. And you see how just the Eiffel Tower part is uh, active and the rest is inactive. Actually, I want to go more. I think I'm going to paint here, here. I like the water that the water doesn't move. It kind of looks weird. You know, the whole idea is to have a contrast between motion and no motion. So look at my mask. My mask, you see by pressing Alt on a mask, you can see what the mask is. It's black here. Black reveals, white conceals. So click Alt again, so it only reveals this part. So let me play this again, and boom. We only have this part, so it's a nice cinemagraph. I, I really like the effect. If you want, I, I if I want to make it smaller, I can reverse. I can press X for white in the foreground, and I can brush here, and I'm going to freeze this part. I can play again. You just do what you want, and not only this part is kind of freezing. And to make it even stranger, I could maybe bring this back to life. So that some part of uh, the thing is frozen in the air. Oops, sorry. Uh, white. Yeah, I want, sorry, black. Black. I want to see, maybe that's going to be weird. Let's, you know, just play around and find something that you like. You know, yeah, it's kind of weird. I think I like more the idea. Okay, white reveals. So I want all this to be revealed. Let's see. Yeah. And it reveals the photo. Okay. Black again. Anyway, something like that. Voila. I think this is what I'm going to do. So the, the whole fountain in front of the uh, Eiffel Towel is moving and the rest of the photo is not moving. That's the effect I was going for. Okay, so now you're ready to do your animated GIF. For this, you have to go to File, Export. And if you have Lightroom CC, it's going to be in Save for Web Legacy. If you have CS5 or CS6, it's just export for the web. Once you're in here, now a little trick is usually when you want to do animated GIF, it goes, you know, f for Facebook, it does not need to be like full HD, okay? And because I would advise you to not go over three mega um, as, as a size. Right now I'm at 10, almost 11 mega, which is too much. So usually the first thing that I do is I go to uh, the size and I put in even 40%. 40% is fine. Uh, it's going to resize from 1920 1080 p which is full HD, to 768 432 Now, wh whenever you do something, it is going to take a, a while to, to, to be done, okay, because it has to recalculate the whole thing. And already I went from 11 megs to 2 megs, okay? Just make sure color is 256. Uh, make sure that lousy is around 15. That's a, usually a good value. 
and uh, and then transparency is on i find that transparency if i take it off you see it goes to 3.7 if i put it back on it goes to 2.1 okay and then make sure looping action you put in forever okay and you can click here on preview and that's going to open up uh, a browser your default browser and just going to play the video and that's what people is going to see on facebook okay if you like this kind of uh, settings you can also go here in the presets and uh, go here, sorry, save settings. And let's call this, I'm gonna call this uh, GIF uh, Cinemagraph, Cinemagraph settings. Okay, so that next time I can just use a Cinemagraph setting and I'm gonna save it, which I've already done. So that's the first, that's the first Cinemagraph. Now we gotta do a second Cinemagraph, which is a bit more complex and um, and I'm going to give you actually this Las Vegas to go. I'm going to give it for free as a raw file so you can play around with it, you know, if you don't have anything. But make sure when you shoot, you shoot on a tripod, something that has movement. Let me show you another example, which I find is really cool. And uh, this is this video. That's the original clip. So that's my friend, Arthur, an amazing actor in France. And he's like holding a smoke machine, a smoke baton. I don't know how you call that. And... Uh, the problem of this video is that the first image is black and then you have the video. Okay, and so this was shot by Ellen Parker. Now let me talk to you about Ellen Parker. Uh, Ellen Parker is a specialist in cinemagraph. He lives in Paris. And so if you have a company and you wanna have some nice cool cinemagraph, you can check his website, which is ilianparker.com. It will be in the description of this video. He's got a whole bunch of Cinemagraph and he really he inspired me to do this episode and he even gave me I'm not giving you this this files but he gave me uh, this files to play around with because what he did is pretty clever he told his friend Arthur to hold a smoke machine and then he shot a, a photo of it a very high resolution photo so and we're gonna mix both to make a Cinemagraph the first thing that I want to do is that this video is if I go to image image size you see uh, it's at 19 1080p 19 1080p which is the you know basically the size of a full hd video this however is a jpeg so if i go to image image size it says four five thousand four hundred sixteen by three thousand thirty eight which is not good so i'm going to take the crop tool and i'm going to put in 1920 pixel by 1080p pixel so that i have a cropping that's uh exactly how I want it okay so now this image if I go to image image size this one is also 1920 by 1080p which is full HD I'm gonna take my move tool drag and drop this image over the video and press shift before I drop it so it's gonna drop exactly on top of it okay now remember it's in video group one so I'm gonna drag and drop it out of video group one and on top of it so that I can have the video here uh, the photo here so right now if I play back, it's just going to read, see the photo. So there is, there's no change. Okay. I don't want that. So I'm going to turn off the visibility of that layer. Now check it out. If you turn, if you, if I put the visibility on and off, you can see it's not aligned exactly. So what the, that's very important to be aligned. So I'm going to take that layer, which is the photo and that layer is, which is the video. And I'm going to go to edit, uh, auto align layers. And I'm just going to take the first option the auto option okay and as a result now if i click you can see that uh, it's much more aligned now we have a little crop factor to do but we'll do that afterwards okay so now the videos are aligned i'm going to take the visibility off of the video and i'm going to do the same trick i'm going to bring in a little bit the beginning voila okay then i'm going to duplicate the video group one command j or you can drag and drop here on new and it's going to do the same thing. So now we have the two videos on top. I'm going to bring this, the second video at the end, remember. And because we added a little beginning here, boom, we have some data here. Oh, make sure you don't include the black frame. No black frame. It's going to look weird. Okay. Let me cl close this. Let me close this to make sure that the, the, the JPEG is the lens of the video. Okay, I'm gonna play this back to see how it goes. Now already it's looking way better. Now same thing, I need to blend the beginning because we have a sort of a jump that I don't want. So 
Remember the trick, you go at the first frame of, the, of that little end video, you open this up, you press opacity uh, for keyframes. So right now I want this to be at zero opacity. Okay, and then right away by the end, it gets to the end of the video, I want this to be at 100 opacity. So it's just gonna blend both clips. And now let me play this, and we should get less of a, of a jump effect. You see, almost no jump effect on this one. Okay, perfect. Now we are ready to do, uh, we are ready to blend with the original photo. And I think it was clever from uh, Elan to, to do that because having a photo in the foreground, you get a lot, a much better quality. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna create a group, uh, a mask, okay? And take my brush, big brush, and I want to hide this part here, the part with the smoke. Just the part with the smoke here. Okay, maybe not this part. Uh, maybe, let me make my brush smaller. This part now. Yeah, this, yes. This now. Okay, let's play and see how that goes. And the whole idea is we just have the smoke going and the rest doesn't move. Okay. And uh, let's crop the overall video. I'm going to crop the overall video here. Now I can clear this. I don't. I don't care that the, the video is 920 by 1080p. I don't really care for that. You know, a GIF can be whatever size you want. I mean, unless you really want it to be in full HD. But I, I, I want to keep his copyright. I think. Uh, well, no, I don't want to crop it too much because I don't want to lose the smoke effect. But yeah, when I auto, auto align the images, I got this little issue here. Okay, let me place this back. And uh, and good. We're good to go, we're good to go. I can add some more, I can click here, take a brush, maybe get this, the smoke coming down a bit lower here. Okay, let's paste this again. Yeah, I like that. It's really good quality, so we have the quality of photo mixed up with video. It's uh, pretty clever from Mr. Ellen Parker. Check him out, he's really cool. All right, so, oh, I did something weird here on the, on the arms. So, X for white, and I'm just gonna brush here. Yeah, make sure I don't, you don't want to touch that. Voila, perfect. Yeah, it looks even more weird to have like the beginning of the smoke not moving. Interesting effect. Now, maybe not here. Okay, X, and but just a little bit here. I think I like that. I like the whole idea that the stick is not moving. I think it's kind of cool. Okay, now we're ready to export. So file, export, save for the web. And now we have the cinematograph preset that we created. So um, we should be almost good to go. It's, go it's going to load. And uh, okay, it did 100%, so I'm gonna put it at 40%, because I don't want it to be so big. Voila. And uh, so you can preview it, but this time I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna show you the final results. So I'm just gonna click Save. And I already have one here. I'm going to replace this, replace it again. Go to the finder. Voila. Oops, go to the finder. And this is what it looks like. So we did this one. And we did the last Vegas, uh, no, on the, um, this, no, not this one, this one, sorry. Yeah, we did this one. Voila, so I hope uh, you find this fun. Doing cinematography is really fun. It's a cool way to promote your work or you know, make jokes or whatever. It's a little cool technique and it's, uh, it's a good training to, to use in Photoshop. I hope this explanation was clear and I will see you in another free tutorial, mesdames et messieurs.